Okay, so hello and welcome. Uh, this video is uh, part one of a series sort of re replying to a question uh, asking for videos on subgame perfect equilibrium. So this is part one. Subgame perfect equilibrium is a refinement of the Nash equilibrium. is introduced by Reinhard Selten in uh, this. So this is the famous paper, the chain store paradox. Uh, Selten, Nash, and John Hirsani won the Nobel Prize in economics. Um, that's not the that's not the right name. There's some interesting history about what the Nobel Prize in economics is actually called, but we can put that aside for now. That was in 1994. So anyway, so the way that we think about the way that we introduce like the chain store paradox story and the way that we introduce subgame perfect equilibrium is typically the sort of incumbent and entrant structure. So suppose we have an entrant who is deciding whether to stay out or come in. We have an incumbent who is going to decide whether to acquiesce and accommodate entry or to engage in a price war. If the entrant stays out, they'll retain some profit of one or whatever is the funds they have, uh, and you will get profits of three, of three. If they come in and you engage in a price war, you both get zero. They lose the one that they would have had. And if you acquiesce, you each split the market and get uh, four each. Okay, so so solving this thing by subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, first thing I want to do is I will rewrite this game in matrix form. So note, in matrix form, the first payoff goes to column goes to the row player. The second payoff goes to column player. In extensive form game, the first payoff goes to player one. The second payoff goes to player two. Now. In subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we know a so we'll, we'll define it uh, like this: a strategy profile. So strategy profile in this case would be like in price war or in acquiesce or out price war or out acquiesce. So we have four strategy profiles. A strategy profile is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium if it's going to stipulate Nash equilibrium play in all subgames. Okay, so first we have to define a subgame. It turns out a subgame is going to be uh, is going to is going to be beginning with a node and con and containing all subsequent nodes. And so in this case, we'll have two subgames. So the first one is going to be the one beginning with this node. So that's a subgame. That's a proper subgame. And then we are going to have trivially the entire game as a subgame. So in extensive form, if you have to. At an exam, you have to find the subgames, you have to circle them. You always circle the whole game because that's one you get for free. So, okay, where are the Nash equilibrium? Let's just look for Nash equilibrium in the matrix game. It'll sort of motivate why subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is really interesting. So, here I've solved by best response approach. So, the way that this works is Remember, the first payoff goes to column the row player. The second payoff goes to column player. Let's suppose I'm the row player. Let's just say, hypothetically, the column player has selected price war. What's my best response? Well, if I get zero, or if I choose in, I get zero. If I choose out, I get one. My best response as row player to column player's price war is to stay out. What's my best response to column player's choice of acquiesce? Well, if the column player is going to acquiesce, if the incumbent's going to ac acquiesce, and I come in, I get two. If I stay out, I get one. My best response to acquiesce is in. I get a payoff of two. So I've underlined it. Okay, what about the incumbent? If the entrant enters, what's the incumbent's best response? Well, if they choose a price war, they get zero. If they acquiesce, they get two. So they're going to acquiesce. What if the what if the rival stays out? Well, the it, it turns out the choice of price war versus acquiesce is going to be equally good. So I'll underline both. And therein it's going to lie an interesting issue. So, in terms of Nash equilibria, well, remember if you have two underlines in a cell, you have a Nash equilibrium. So you have two Nash equilibrium out and price war and in and acquiesce. But maybe we don't feel so good about both of them. There's a flaw with one of them. It's a problem. It turns out like one of them is not sequentially rational. So let's explore this. So let's go back to thinking about subgame. I mentioned this already, but a subgame begins with a single node and then contains all the subsequent parts of the game. 
you can't cross information sets. And so if you were to have like the dash line going across between nodes, you can't break through that. Uh, you have to you have to go back to the preceding node. So you have to uh, you can't cross information sets. That's the other thing that's kind of not precise about my definition here. And then the whole game is trivially a subgame. So I've circled the subgames in red. So the whole game, and then this little subgame here. And now, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is requiring Nash play in all subgames. So find the Nash equilibria in the corresponding matrices for each subgame. Well, the whole game, so okay, so once you've got the subgames, now you're going to get a matrix representation for each subgame. Well, we already did it for the whole game. That was this one. Now let's make a matrix for the proper subgame. That's this right here. And the one that's consistent with Nash play with best responding behavior is this right here. Is so choose uh, so the strategies are price war and acquiesce and acquiesce yields a higher payoff to player two than price war, so we should acquiesce. All right, so what's going on here now is the Nash equilibrium in the whole game is out price war and then in acquiesce the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or the Nash equilibrium in the subgame involves playing acquiesce so the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is only in acquiesce we eliminate from consideration out price war why because out price war is stipulating price war which is not consistent with Nash play once you actually get into the subgame. Another way to say that is that it's not sequentially rational. So when player when the entrant has actually entered, it's not rational for the incumbent to choose price war because they're giving up too. Right? So once it's already a foregone conclusion that the entrant has entered, it's no longer rational for the incumbent to try to equi or to try to choose price war, they must acquiesce. Actually, solving by backward induction is going to be the same in this case. So you go to the end of the game. What is the incumbent going to want to do? Well, 2 is bigger than 0, so I'll shade over acquiesce. Wrapping back to the beginning of the game, the entrant looks forward and disregards price war, disregards the 0 that doesn't look very tempting. They see this 2. Why? Because they know if they actually enter, uh, the incumbents going to acquiesce, right? If we can figure this out, presumably they can too. And so they are going to con they're going to compare getting one if they stay out to two if they go in. Of course they're going to go in. And so our backward induction solution is in acquiesce, which is exactly our subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. That's going to be true of games of this class. So out price war is not a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium because it's not sequentially rational. Upon being called upon to play, incumbent wishes to acquiesce. So this is kind of spelled that wrong, sorry. And, it, and I'll say, well, subgame perfect and backward induction are going to agree in games of complete and perfect information, like the one that I've got here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude. I'll move on in the next video to talk about a, a three-player game. So uh, like, subscribe, ask questions, go have fun, whatever. <laughs>